Hi, uh, welcome back. This is Steve Moore. Um, welcome to Character Modeling with me, Steve Moore. Um, yeah, I took a break. Uh, I was down in New Zealand for a few weeks. Uh, so, so now we're just picking things up again. Um, this is kind of a prelude. Um, I've been uh, mucking around with Marvelous Designer for her costume, which if, if you have Marvelous Designer is a you know, cloth sim program, it's pretty good. Um, and so here you can see I've just kind of laid out some pattern. I'm just starting to sketch out her uh, her top and her skirt, you know, and I've got the patterns laid out here, and you know, and you can basically and then we'll basically project that onto the model. Grab this, you know, grab this stuff here and run the simulation, and hey presto, it, it you know projects like cloth, and you can choose what kind of material. It could be leather, it could be silk, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I so I'm kind of actually new to Marvelous Designer, so I'm I'm having a bone up for, on this for my work. Uh, so I'm simultaneously going to be studying it and kind of making this costume. So that'll be interesting. Um, but I'm already kind of finding out that it's it's a lot of it's about layering. Just like you got a sculpture, you start out with the big shapes like I'm doing here, and then we'll come in and maybe put a dart in the dress there so that it fits a little better, you know, and adjust the shapes of the patterns so that it fits better and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, anyway, but with that, we're going to kind of pick up where we left off last time. Okay, when uh, last we left off, we got our pose back in the ZBrush, but you know, you can see we've got some nasty sharing going on here around the shoulders, and I think that's the first thing we're going to hit here today. So first, um, I think I'll I will just kind of smooth it out a little bit, relax, you know, just relaxing um, these spans a bit, so. Uh, we have a, a, you know, a nice even surface to start on and I like to mask a lot I like to you know just it's a bit of a crutch for me but it makes me feel feel safe like I I, I don't I can when I get really into things I can you know I can make mistakes so I I mask off the areas I don't want to touch and and then I just go to town on that area using a little bit of the move brush here And the cool thing is we can always, you know, we can always check this against our skeleton, but um, we used the skeleton to make sure that we had kind of accurate joint placement. And we accepted this kind of horrible shearing here as something we would have to fix, and that's cool. Um, so yeah, it's our kind of reconstructed deltoid here. getting all kinds of different angles on it you know just want to make sure you, know, you have to constantly spin the model when you're sculpting because you know what looks right from one angle can be completely wrong from another so you're constantly turning the model like a light like I think of it as like you're kind of it's you're working on a lathe you're spinning the thing and and shaping it at the same time So this, there's some nasty little kind of polygon art artifacts in there, but not to worry. We can we can um, clean over that. We can sculpt right over that. Sometimes when I, you know, sometimes I get in, as, you know, I have a mesh and maybe it's got a lot of kind of nasty stuff going on. What I'll I'll even do is I'll copy it, or remesh it, and then with the new new topology, you can get a nice smooth surface and project that back onto your original mesh if you're worried about kind of the vert order or something like that. Back on the move brush, just slowly kind of getting it back into shape. It's like this is kind of a panel beating job, essentially. Huh? We, like a, we've had a car wreck, and and we're, we have to kind of iron out the dits. And now, now we can get back into the anatomy here. So kind of her, you know, her triceps back here, lats going into her upper, upper arm, and starting to look a little bit more normal. Again. So I want to isolate that kind of upper arm. You see the wonkiness there. 
So using the Move Brush again. Move Brush, Move Topology in particular I like because it, you know, it, it, um, it recognizes different surfaces. You know, if it recognizes if the, you know, the finger is in front of the other finger, you can, it can, you know, it's smart enough to intuit that. So very useful. Now we're looking at her other arm. And yeah, it looks like a bit of a, a bodybuilder right now. So um, yeah, as I mentioned last time, at the moment I don't have reference. So we do, what we're doing here is completely kind of constructive, kind of in our imaginations where we're figuring out the anatomy. Um, ideally, I'd have some reference of this pose. Um, but that just makes this you know, more of a challenge, a little bit more fun. Focusing in on, on the shoulder here again. Um, and yeah, so I want that to be a nice, that line from the lat there up to be a nice uh, smooth area, you know. So I'm gonna come in here and find find your scapula in here. I'm gonna figure out this crease. Yeah, so just trying to imagine what the what the scapula would look like at that position. Whilst we're kind of carving out that big bulge. You can figure a lot out just logically, like, okay, if you understand the skeleton, you understand basically how the muscles fit on it, then you can construct what you, what you think should be there. Plus, stuff that looks just plain wrong, you can fix. Like, yeah, right right there, there's that huge protrusion, kind of the bottom of the breast there, that's, that's just looking weird. We'll get to that. Mask up the area that we don't want to work on, and now we can straighten this out again with the move tool, just like we did the other arm, no problem. So you can see why it's helpful to mask on, like you, you guarantee you don't move something you don't, don't intend to, which is really easy with the move tool. Sometimes you know even weird, like you've got an area that everything you think is masked, but there's one area that isn't, and it starts, it ends up kind of falling off in some weird direction, you discover it way too late. I love shoulders, man, they're such a cool kind of piece of articulation, and it also makes them hard to, to figure out sometimes. So I'm just imagining what the line from her breast to the, you know, her pec muscle there going into her arm, what that should be like. Pulling back to kind of see the overall shape. There we go. Still have a ways to go, but it's starting to look halfway decent now. You can see the horrible crease in there, we'll, we'll get rid of that. And get rid of that little crease in there. Yep. I always love the way like the um the upper arm goes into the torso there and then you have the, the wing of the latissimus dorsi on her back. You know, like that's connecting the two, making that nice curve. Okay, so here we want to figure out how her her deltoids gonna kind of collide with her with her uh, trapezius here. You know, like her arm going into her shoulder here, and. 
we're going to imagine that it's going to push the flesh up a bit, you know, I, I, I kind of imagine the deltoid, it's trying to maintain its shape, collides with the flesh of, around her clavicle and her neck, and that gets pushed up, so we're going to have a kind of a, a creasing fold, but first we'll get the mass, first we'll try to just get the mass of the whole area. One of my favorite areas on the body, huh? the, just the way the muscles, you know, the pectoralis area, just as in the in the back, the way they connect with the arm, it's just really cool. And I would go nice and slow, just kind of bit by bit, trying to figure it out. Lots of lumps and bumps here to kind of push around. There's some wonky arm there that yeah, we have to fix that. But anywho, start. We made a little progress today. I would say not, you know, not too bad. Good start. It's going to take a while. I'm on the on the uh, on the fence about actually hiring a model too. Like, I think it's a good exercise to figure it out yourself, and I think at the very least I'll take it as far as I can, and maybe maybe just hire a model come in and like, and then fix the things that are just aren't right. We'll see. It basically, if I if I do it completely out of my head, it you know I I, I we'll see we'll see. But um, generally that's how you end up with you know a cartoon. It's because it, you have to you know imagine things and you're gonna you know we can do our best. But well, it'll be interesting to see how she comes out. First pass. I'll call it first pass is just straight from my head. And there might be a second pass, okay, get a model and see what happens. But uh, the other thing I'm thinking about here is I, I'm going to add the leather jacket that her, the character has. She has. She has this red leather jacket, and I think that's going to make it a little more interesting. 